Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Upsize Down. I'm Dan. And I'm Joe. And we are doing the final tour of both Serenity and Liberation today. We are done. It's installed on site and this is awesome. We're really excited about this because this is a double unit on one lot, fully off grid. So, so before we get into the details, um, I just want to let you guys know about the not-for-profits that True North gives back with. And one of those is Four Oceans, which we have displayed here. And we give back to keep the oceans clean because we're super passionate about the oceans. Another way we give back is by donating to Creating Roots for former foster youth, which is helping youth aging out of the foster system. And so with every home, we give back to two different not-for-profits, and that's our way of giving back to society. We encourage every one of our clients that buys a tiny home to find their own way to give back as well. Um, this tiny home is completely off-grid. You've heard that before if you've been following us, but we wanted to give you a nice walkthrough and show you some of the features that we have here. So we're starting here in the kitchen. Um, and so this is our LG standard 24-inch um, fridge with a bottom freezer, totally off-grid and running wonderfully. Another thing that is standard for us is our Bosch uh, speed oven, which is a dual purpose microwave speed oven. Um, so many of you have watched our videos, that's what we prefer to use. It just makes a lot of sense. It looks nice and clean, sharp, and it's a really good name. Another thing that you'll notice in this kitchen is the quartz counters and the bronze finishes throughout. Um, that just really notches the level of class in this up. And um, it's one of our upgrade packages and our finishes. Dan likes to use uh, face frame cabinets, but this is frameless cabinets, which a lot of people like, and I think it looks really classy. So we're gonna try and convince Dan to use a little bit more of this maybe, or be more open to it anyways. Because as you can see, it finishes really nice and just gets a different look. As you can see that there's an overhang, so it gives you your automatic table here and then there's even some extra storage in the corner. There is plenty of room in this living room for um, furniture layouts and options for much seating for entertaining guests. Um, it's very cozy, very comfy, and yeah, lots of room. In many of our homes, you've seen that we like to use celestry windows because that brings in a lot of natural light and it makes the space feel a lot bigger. Here, we have an extra storage loft, whether it's a, a guest sleeping over or extra storage. Um, it's not large, but we have this half wall here that gives a little bit of privacy, and it's just a little bit of extra space in a tiny house, and you can never go wrong with space. Notice that this loft is not very high, and that's because this loft was created to OBC standards, and you'll see why that's important when you come in this way. So you can see here that the height in the bathroom is a lot more than we've had before. Um, that's because this is meeting OBC requirements. So this is a ginormous bathroom for a tiny home. Um, it's dual purposing as a laundry room, as you can see, with the dual washer dryer. And then it also houses our mechanical room. Dan will tell you a little bit more in detail because he's a technical guy. He knows all about this jazz, so. The gorgeous five foot shower with glass doors and brass finishes. It is outstanding. I think it's like the diamond of this house is how I like to think of it because, hey, it, I mean, that is just beautiful. Here you'll see our Cinderella incinerating toilet. Um, this is something, Dan will talk more technically about this, but however, this is the only way I would go in a tiny house because it's super clean and this is the nicest looking off-grid toilet that I've ever seen. Notice in our bathroom that we have ample storage space with a linen closet and storage underneath our sink. Um, another thing to note is that we use quartz counters in 
or sorry, the same counters in our bathrooms as we do in our kitchen. Um, that does two things. It keeps the space unified and it, because it's a small space, the more different materials that you put into it, it makes it feel smaller. So we want this to feel as big as possible. So welcome to this gorgeous bedroom with tons of storage. This is more storage than I think I had in my first house or even in the house that I have now. Um, so this is amazing. You can put your winter and your summer clothes in here. This bed is a queen bed. Um, and if you notice, we, we used pine tongue and groove and stained it to match the beams in here. Um, it just, again, unifies it and just gives a little bit of oomph in the back of the bed. This is dual purpose because this is a Murphy bed. So we can flip it up and use it as an office or as a workout room, which is what this client is going to be using it as. So these houses are off grid, which means that everything is running off of solar and propane. And what we want to do is run more things off of propane so that we're not pulling so much on the solar capabilities. So one of the ways we do that is a propane cooktop. Uh, we also have in our standards list a whole propane range, but we have decided to keep this as our standard um, microwave slash convection oven, which does run on the electrical. So that will be one of the biggest draws on the uh, solar system. Something we should mention here, as you notice the fridge as well, everything is wired up as a regular house. We're not running 12 volt fridges and 12 volt appliances and 12 volt outlets. We have wired this entirely up as a 120 volt house and everything gets converted at the inverter. So instead of starting with 12 volts and going up to 120 and getting a whole lot of loss of efficiency, we actually have a 48 volt battery bank. So let me show that to you. So here's our blue ion battery bank, 16 kilowatt hours of lithium ion batteries. No, we don't need this much power to run one house, but remember we have two houses here running off of the same solar system. So all of the solar panels are coming back to here and they are essentially charging four batteries for this house and four batteries for the other house. So far on our test runs of the last few days, we are generating at times 10, more, 10 times more power than we're actually using. So that's really cool. Um, and it's just because tiny homes are so efficient. We're not actually using that much power. And this battery bank here would be able to run a regular sized house for everything. So we're running two tiny homes off of it and everything's working great. We'll see how often they use the washer and all the water, which the jet, uh, the well pump is another thing that draws a lot of the power as well. And how often they're using the microwave. Those are the things that are gonna really draw this down but we've got probably four or five days of backup power here. And while we're actually running now, the whole day it's running off of directly off the solar panels and it's not actually tying into the, I mean, technically in the system it is, but we're not actually depleting the battery system. So that's only used at night. And then if we have five days of cloud, that's when this will start to get depleted. And only then will the generator kick in. And I'll show that to you later. So we're using a Solark 12K inverter here, which is also working as a solar charger. First time I've used this system, I love it. Uh, yes, it's very large and it's very complicated, but it's doing four jobs in one. So it's really nice. All the um, shutoffs are there, the PV disconnect, the battery disconnect, the generator disconnect, the AC disconnect, everything's all in one box. Uh, all the wires go into one place, so I don't need multiple places to put everything. Really like the way that that turned out. Gonna be using this a lot more often. The combination with that and the Blue Ion is an awesome thing. Um, recommending and suggesting this for all of our clients. Uh, we have three more right now that are wanting to go off grid, so they're gonna be getting a very similar thing. This is our standard boiler, and it runs off of propane. So this is the second item in the house that runs off of propane. Uh, electrical wouldn't be enough for the uses that we have for it. It doesn't get hot enough, but it's also not a great thing when we're on solar to be running stuff off of electrical. So this is the second thing that we run off of propane in an off-grid house. However, it is standard that we use the propane one anyways. And this one is doing two things on most of our houses, unless you opt out of it. But we do the hot water for your faucets, but it also does 
the hot water for the in-floor heating. So this whole house is heated from the ground up and we don't have air conditioning, but we do have fans. You can see the well pump on the bottom here. And as well, this is our heat cable, which gets plugged in in the winter time to keep the lines from freezing after they exit the house. Standardly, we put on a 10 foot line. So that gives us at least four feet into the ground but we can go up to a hundred foot line if, if we're not burying the cable that far. We could have gone all the way back to the well in this point. So yes, we have a well on this site. Yes, it's an off-grid system, but we don't believe in putting the water tanks in the house because they constantly have to be refilled. They're not that large. So by either burying a cistern that gets refilled once every one to three months, or by having a well on site, those are the best ways to be drawing water out of that. So in both of those instances, we would be using this well pump and this heat cable system. The other thing that we have here is a filtration system. This is a standard on our houses. Yes, there's a lot of stuff back in this mechanical room. It's kind of awesome how everything fits. Uh, we got the sediment filter and then a UV filter. Um, this site has particularly clean water apparently. It will get tested and we'll see how it actually is. Like I said, this system is standard for us, but we can add different sediment filters and then even a salt filter to start with, depending on how bad the water is where we're going. The other thing that we run off of propane here is the toilet. Sure, you could just use a composting toilet and that uses hardly anything. It still has a little bit of the draw of electricity to run the fan because we like to use the separate toilets. But when we go incinerating, we go to propane. Cinderella also makes a electrical version, but that would be way too much draw on the solar system here. So the propane, we've tested it out. We haven't actually used it. We've just tested it out to see if it runs and everything works great. Really looking forward to the feedback from the clients on how the system works. So remember, when we're off grid, we wanna do as much propane as possible. So the three big things that we get are the propane boiler, the toilet, and the cooktop. This is the chimney for the Cinderella incinerating toilet. Um, on this house, we've decided to, or rather the client was okay with us painting it black because all of her trims, the windows, the skirting, the fascias, they're all black and this, this just looks great. On the other house, we actually covered it in a chimney that is part of the siding of the house. And so it kind of disappears in, in the sight lines. That one will look a little funny painted black. So to each their own, there's a whole bunch of different ways to hide this. We're doing another one right now and we've actually hidden it inside the wall by making the wall thicker. That was possible because of the way that the bathroom is framed. We couldn't do that in these ones. So this house is still completely on the trailer. This is the trailer frame, but because of the way that we do the wheels, you don't notice wheel wells. So it works really well because now it looks like a foundation home. So we've skirted it. There's an extra layer of foam underneath here and then plywood that we've painted black. And then we've put fence boards on top just to dress it up a bit. But you can't tell from looking at it because there's no wheel wells that it's still on a trailer, which is kind of nice. So even if we did an actual foundation home, we could get this a little closer to the ground, but it would still look very similar. And this is a propane storage system. We ship with two 30 pound tanks. No, they're not on the side when we go down the road. We installed them afterwards, but we ship it running. We've tested on these, um, everything works, but the boiler won't run properly in the winter off of these tanks. It'll probably still run for a while, but you'll only be able to drain it to about 50% before the boiler's not working properly anymore. So we highly recommend but we can't force people, but we highly recommend that you upgrade to a 500 pound tank on site when you get here. Yes, this will work, but it'll work better on the 500 pound tank. The other thing that we have out here is the generator. We've built a little roof just to keep the rain off of it. Like I was saying inside, this thing will probably never run. So it's just gonna be part of their monthly checklist to make sure that everything's um, up and running and they'll start this up and run it for 10 minutes just to get everything flowing inside and make sure it still runs. But that's probably the only times they're gonna to have to be running this unless we have some severe winter weather and they'll have to run this maybe a little bit. But three hours of the generator will charge the batteries for the next few days. So that's awesome because it's not gonna to have to run that often or that long and it won't annoy any neighbors that might be able to hear it. And here's a solar array that's running everything. So you can see that there's 12 panels behind me. Six on the top are for the one house, the six on the bottom are for the other house. So each set of six is running in series and then the two series are combined in parallel 
and one cable is running back to the first house, because remember the second house is running as a sub house or a sub panel off of the first one. So if they ever want to separate, however, they could simply just run another cable from the combiner box here and run each series back to each house. Each one of these panels is 440 watts. And so each panel is about one meter by two meters. And it's huge. I knew it was going to be big, but I never thought it was going to be this big. So if you liked what you saw here today, I would encourage you to join our workshops at True North Tiny Homes and work with our design team. Um, our design team loves to work within our standards, but also personalize to your taste. Um, we just, we, we had so much fun working on this and we're excited to work with you. So we'll see you there. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us on today's episode where we toured the site where serenity and liberation are gonna stay. We're dubbing this, or Elise is dubbing this, the Ferrari of off-grid tiny homes. And we've got a few clients who have seen this who want to do the same thing. So don't have to have the same style, but we'd love to build the same quality for everybody. Remember, I'm Daniel Ott. And I'm Joanna. And this is Upsize Down, where we turn housing on its head. <laughs>